Ah, uh, greetings and welcome to a continuing series of educational rounds at Seclair, an integrative holistic psychiatric facility in Delmont, Pennsylvania, where we make a specialty out of treating people and not necessarily diagnoses. My name is Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist, and today I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be... I'm Allison Santo. I'm a physician assistant student from Mount Union. And on my right... I'm Emily Purdy. I'm a PA student as well from Duquesne University. And for followers of uh, this series, perhaps you're familiar with what we do and that we try to incorporate something that you can actually use into your life. We just don't tell you to make uh, lemons out of, make, make lemonade out of lemons or tell you to jump rope because it's good for you. So today our little topic is that uh, we were talking about adding positivity into people's lives. So when you go to what I would call, let's say, a poor therapist, a poor doctor, a poor trainer, a poor uh, nutritionalist, they're going to list all the negative things that you need to get out of your life. Uh, you go to a nutritionist and then they say, oh my goodness, no more, no more Big Macs for you. They're, they're completely out. That ice cream, it's got, to, it's got to get out of your life. No more in the refrigerator. Coca-Cola, oh my goodness, do you realize what you're doing to yourself? Uh, so you walk out of there like a beaten dog. Okay, so rather than do that, what a good nutritionist, a good coach, a good therapist, a good doctor will do is rather than that, they'll add positivity into your life by adding positivity into your life. And when we add positivity into your life, soon there, soon there won't be much more room left for, for the negative things. So when we're dealing with people with mood disorders, when we're dealing with depression, when we're dealing with anxiety, uh, what we want to do is that leaves, we want to add positivity into people's lives. And one of the ways that at a holistic integrative uh, facility we offer enhancements, and one of the enhancements to offer into people's lives would be exercise. Could you say a little bit more about that, Allison? Sure. Exercise tends to um afterwards make people happy and release some of the endorphins which are the little the happy neurotransmitters in your brain that can um, help to relax and decrease stress and um, overall boost mood. So you're saying that by exercise I can get these little critters, these happy little critters, to, to come <laughs> into my brain and make, make, make some happy things happen? <laughs> Is that the same thing that's over here? Well, not necessarily. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, it just, in your brain you have um, some different chemicals that work to either make you, to make you happy or release during times of stress or um, during different periods and different moods and whatnot. So um, by exercising it actually helps to increase the positive and the good neurotransmitters and chemicals that are released. So would you prescribe uh, exercise, Emily? Absolutely. I would definitely prescribe exercise. I think it's very important. And like Allison said, it helps release endorphins. That is like that little happy juice that can help somebody in times of happy stress. Happy juice. Yes. I like that. Yeah. So does that mean, that, so if I'm a patient of yours and you prescribe me exercise, does that mean I have to go buy all this exercise outfit and I have to join a gym and I have to lift all these weights and I have to have a personal trainer? Oh, that's, that sounds like too much. Yeah, that sounds like a lot. I would say starting off, no, you don't need to go out and buy a bunch of fancy equipment and get a personal trainer, join a gym. Exercise can be as simple as going outside and walking for 30 minutes a day. Okay, so. And that can even be split up into a couple different times a day. So if you only have a total of 30 minutes that you could do anything, if you had five minutes here or there just getting outside and walking, and it all adds up to 30 minutes in the end. So it's equally beneficial. So what you're telling me is I don't have to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Correct. Okay. <laughs> no. okay. And you don't even need to have 30 minutes at once to do it. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to fill voids in people's life, are we not? To avoid in a life, so when we so when we have a person with depression, so when we have a person with anxiety, perhaps we have a person who's uh, involved in drug addiction or alcohol addiction, or some type of thing that's consuming a lot of their time. Okay, so Allison, when you pull that out of out of someone's life, it leaves a huge void, doesn't mm -hmm. it? And so when we talk about people in recovery, and when we talk about people in recovery, uh, we mean everybody is in recovery from something, Emily. Mm -hmm. Okay, and recovery from something, it doesn't that When you think about in recovery, naturally, you think about drug and alcohol addiction, don't you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody's in recovery from something. So remember, what we do is 
we don't we, we, we don't treat behaviors, okay? If treating behaviors is is like blowing smoke out the first floor window when the basement's on fire, okay? So what we do is we look at what's driving those behaviors, quite then we have to replace that. So one of the ways that exercise can do is to fill that void. Okay? So when we talk about avoiding people, places, and things, and that's not only for drugs and alcohol, but that's for anxiety, that's for depression. So if you're covered with gasoline, we won't avoid open flame, do we not? So then how are we going to, how are we going to fill that void? What, what, and our suggestion today is, Allison? Exercise. Exercise. So how would you, so if I'm coming to you and I say, okay, uh, you know, I have this anxiety issue, I have this depression problem, uh, how would you tell me to begin? How do you start? It's easy to say, well, go exercise. I would recommend that you start by finding 10 or 15 minutes in your day that you could go for a walk outside. Or if you can't go outside, if there's a place that you can walk indoors, if you have access to a rec center or a gym or even a YMCA. Um, sometimes there are various um, groups that also people get together and go walking on Saturday mornings or and have add a little bit of a social benefit in there as well. So it's um, something to start maybe once or twice a week if you can and finding that time that would work best for you. Sure. So are you familiar with procrastination? Yes, absolutely. That, that I will start exercising tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So our goal is here is how do you, I can think about exercising as much as I can I want to. Okay? It's like the old saying, work fascinates me, I could watch it for hours. Uh, so the idea is how do we get people out of a chair, and that's what we do here at Seclair. We ask people to make commitments. Okay? We ask people to make commitments to, them, to themselves, and, we ask, and one of the best ways for you to exercise is make a commitment to someone else. Make a commitment to someone that you love in your life. Make a commitment to someone that loves you. Okay? So when you commit to someone else, it's easy, it's easy to let yourself down because we've been doing it all of our lives. However, when you commit to someone that you love, when you commit to someone that you care about, that, that gives you a little more of an impetus to actually do it, to get out of that chair, yes. to get in your car, or walk out the front door. So what we need, we need, we need a reason. We need, we need a reason to get somebody going. Okay, so, and also exercise is an excellent distraction method, is it not? You can. To distract yourself from Oh my gosh, I can't, oh, what time does the Dairy Queen open? Uh, and, and, you're, and you're looking at your clock to find out what time's that open. Or that, that ice cream that's in your refrigerator is calling your name real loud. So how do you distract yourself from that? How would you, so you're talking, you were talking to me about these happy little neurons. You were talking to me about this happy juice. Say, but we're more about that. happy juice once it's released when you exercise this actually can help you focus more on making healthy choices so yes you would want to go to the Dairy Queen or yes you would want to get that ice cream out of your fridge or eat that Big Mac maybe before working out but after you perform some sort of exercise it actually can guide you into wanting to eat a vegetable or not really needing any snack at all or just wanting some water it's a really kind of magical juice to try to, to get you to make better choices, I think, with your life. So I don't have to go anywhere to find this magical juice. I don't go to, you don't go on Amazon to find it, Allison? No. No, wow. So you can actually create this yourself. You can. Holy smokes. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope everybody out there can uh, get this message uh, across to them. And the fact that this is a challenge. We're chal I'm chal this is a clear challenge to everyone out there. I'm asking you to commit to yourself, and I'm also asking you to commit to another person. Put it in writing if you have to. Commit to yourself and commit to someone else that you love and care about in your life. And as always, we end every, uh, every one of our little educational rounds with a free prescription, do we not? Uh, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, unplug your television, and, for, and perhaps take up fishing. And for truly my full experience, we ask that you fish without bait a lifetime, without definitive expectations. And as always, your charge is to do a kindness for yourself and do a kindness for another. One small thing, we make, we make small things happen. Let's make small goals doable, build on achievable successes. Until the next time, namaste.